Hi, my name is Claire, and today I'm going to be discussing the life and works of the exceptional Hugh Steers. I'm going to be looking this direction pretty frequently because I'm going to be looking at my notes while I talk, um, and then I, later I'll be using my computer screen to show the paintings that I'm going to discuss. Hugh Steers was born in 1962 in Washington, D.C. His father was a Republican congressman, I think for the state of Maryland, and his mother was a writer and a socialite. She was the stepsister of Jackie Kennedy. And his, he has a brother, Burr Steers. He's a screenwriter, director, and actor. Um, popular films that he's been involved in. He had a small part in Pulp Fiction. Uh, and then I think he directed that movie, Charlie St. Cloud and Seventeen Again, both Zac Efron films, if anyone's ever heard of those. Um, information about his relationship with his family is pretty secure due to the, the nature of their social status. His brother, however, I do know was, um, spoiler alert, uh, beside him when he died, when Hugh Steers died. Um, also, it was revealed in some interviews with his friends that he expressed missing or wanting to have a connection with his parents that he felt like his friends had that he didn't get to have. Hugh Steers attended Hotchkiss in Connecticut. It is a um, pretty like bougie, um, privileged boarding school as most boarding schools are. Um, and then he went to Yale to study art in 1981. In 83, he went to France and Italy with the Parsons School of Design to study art. And then he continued his, his art education at Skowhegan School of Design and finished in 1991. He later died in 95 at the age of 32. He got his foot in the door with the New York City art scene very quickly. He was having... Um, his work show up in galleries in the late 80s and then had his first um, solo art show in 89. And now his work appears all over Italy as well as the United States. So as an artist, I'm going to read a quote about how he described his, his own art. He says, I think I'm in the tradition of a certain kind of American artist. Artist whose work embodies a certain gorgeous bleakness. Edward Hopper, Jackson Pollock, Franz Klein, they all had this austere beauty to them. They found beauty in the most brutal forms. I think that's why that's what characterizes America, the atmosphere, its culture, its cities and landscape. They all have that soft glow of brutality. So I think that really highlights um, how important the AIDS crisis was to his work. Um, he was very heavily influenced by that and eventually it, it was really all that he painted was relationships depicting uh, just the tragedy that was attached to the AIDS crisis. Uh, someone that wrote an essay about Hugh Steers described his paintings as like this. Steers has an imagination hijacked by history. Virtually everything he painted, virtually everything that survives anyway is a reaction to the disease that was stealing the lives of so many friends and peers and that would eventually steal his own. So like I said before, it's going to be really important to remember as well that he died right before um, they were using anti-retroviral anti therapy, uh, which would later, which would change HIV into and AIDS into like a chronic disease instead of a death sentence. And at the time, it was an, a death sentence for him and the people around him that it affected. So the first painting I'm gonna show is this one. It's called Crow. Looks like this. So the way that I am interpreting this is that I'm seeing this as partners and there are quite a few things that I wanna point out here. So I'm gonna to try to talk quickly because there are a couple other things I wanna to get to. Um, we have the main source of light coming from above them and behind them, and they are otherwise in the dark. And then we have this crow here. And a lot of the time that crows are in media, they represent death or bad luck, uh, doom, that kind of thing. So I, f I see this as we have the impending, uh, sorry, <laughs> death coming his his way and he is shielding his partner not only is he ha not only is he sitting on the ground but he is actually turning his face away and 
you can see here that, you know, he's using his own hands to protect his partner, but he is letting it um, come to him. So I think this one's really, really important and beautiful. And another thing that he does in a lot of his paintings is, uh, um, like almost all of them, they're either naked or in their underwear. And also they take place at home, which I think reveals a lot of vulnerability um, in that like they were experiencing all these things in their homes in the closest, most private versions of themselves, that this was still something that was ever prevalent and, and just, and coming their way. And like I said before about the light coming from the top, that could also makes me think that this is like death because he's, you know, if he believes in some sort of afterlife would be going that direction. Okay. And then I'm going to talk about two more and I'm going to show, I'm going to show them one at a time, but I'm going to, I'm going to talk about them collectively because I think they're, they're doing similar work here. Okay. This one is called door to tub, door to tub. We can see here we have, you know, they're both getting very thin. You can see their spines. This is a pretty empty bathroom. And then we have, you know, the partner in here. This looks like an act of comfort as he sits in an empty bathtub. Um, feeling probably gloomy about the state of the world and his health. And then we have this one, uh, which is called Chair to Bed. So a similar title as the last one. And there's that one. And the first thing that I want to point out about both these paintings are the lines that he created and, and how that goes with the title as it's called Chair to Bed. And you can literally follow the line of their arms like so. And then you can also do it, um, sorry, in this other one here, you can follow the line door to tub like so. And what I see here is we have comfort you know he's comforting him in this one but he's also holding on to something stable because he needs to hold on to something too just like he's seated in the bath but this is a pretty pretty tragic uh traumatic scene here so i think it's really interesting that he basically told us to look at these lines with the title of how they're how he's connected to something stable here and then we see and then we have this extremely vulnerable position right there and then in the other one, similar thing, we have this line of he's sitting down stable in this chair, but in this time he is fully clothed, uh, which is pretty rare to see on here. And then we have the line connecting, and then we have the heels here, which uh, Steers painted a lot of his paintings with um, men wearing heels as drag was a big part of his life. He was really interested in drag and this is a good example of how he wanted to show the everlasting beauty of the gay community while he was also showing the, you know, instability and tragedy of the HIV crisis. AIDS crisis, AIDS HIV crisis, excuse me. Okay. And then on that note, the last thing that I would like to say is I would like to leave you all with the inscription on his tombstone, just as something to think about, you know, how they chose that to represent his life. And it is, if we had a keen vision of all ordinary human life, it would be like hearing the grass grow and the squirrel's heartbeat, and we should die of that roar which lies on the other side of silence. So I'm going to leave you guys with that. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening.